Let's go to explain the relationship between OpenRail and Open Buildings and how Open Buildings can take OpenRail data to create properly IFCs. The first thing we need to know is OpenRail has the ability to export to IFC with some limitation. It's IFC for reference view, only for coordination, and the main issue here is having no the option to map to IFC entities, right? As a support side, Open Building is having the ability to export the whole model, not only the corridor, to different versions and view definition. Example, is supporting 2x3, IFC4, coordination view, dynamic transfer view, reference view. But the most important thing is, is having the option to make mapping between the objects in Open Buildings and the IFC entities. Right. So what we can do is take data from OpenRail and use Open Buildings to create the right IFC. But before to do it, we need to be sure that we need to prepare the data if we can, don't want to use the by default definition. So we can create rail custom properties, catalog types, items, and map them to building IFC entities before to export. So as an example, let's go to check what to do. This is open buildings where we have copied a file coming from OpenRail. Right? You can see here there are several elements, the ballast, sub ballast, the concrete slipper. Okay, so we have prepared the word set in order to include some definition for rail as we spoke before. So if we go to check the definition usage, we can check there is a rail properties definition with two properties, rail ID, rail reference associated to two objects, call it rail slab and rail walls. If we go back to the catalog items list, okay, and we scroll to the bottom, that is where the rail uh, categories defined, yeah, you can see here, there is a lot of categories, so we can collapse architectural, structural, ventilation, to see that we have created the new one for us, rail. Two catalog items, rail slabs and rail walls, and different uh, types, right? Uh, two catalog type, rail slab, and we have rail ballast, concrete slippers, sub ballast, is sharing properties, so this is why all are part of a slab, and one type of retaining wall. All of them with rail properties, the different the property for wall or slab, the quantities, and the classification is needed. So we have, as we spoke, we have defined the rail properties, catalog type, catalog items, and this element are also mapped to the uh, IFC entities. So when we are going to select the export tools for IFC, we can see on the mapping option that I have mapped this uh, rail element, uh, all the rail slabs are mapped to use the IFC slab. And the rail walls are mapped to use the IFC wall category, right? Even some different option. So, now let's take the data and convert into open buildings object with properties. To do that, we are going to follow this um, this table. That is, I am going to take the TC rail sub ballast label in example and convert the elements into rail sub ballast. To take the rail ballast and for ballast, concrete slipper and retaining wall. That's something similar. So how to do it? We are going to make a selection by level. So in example, if we go for the rail sub ballast, you can see here is the sub ballast element. Selecting one big element, I can add data. And adding data is allowing me to select one category. In this case, the category can be rail slabs and add the rail sub ballast with the properties I want to add. In example, uh, this is the rail ID and reference by default. I can define the slab type, like slab on grade in example, if the function is structural or not, some properties. Okay, and accepting what we are going to have is the element has been converted into an open buildings element with properties. You can see here on the schedule of the list of elements that this is a sub ballast created here with properties, right? Okay, let's finish with the other elements, right? Let's go again for TC uh, uh, ballast, okay? Let's uh, select only the ballast, it's one element, adding data. And now this element, the ballast, is going to be associated information as ballast, okay, as we did before. Uh, structural in the sample, we can define in the sample the material of concrete for value, okay, the slab type, 
example for slab upgrade. Okay, and now I can accept, click on accept to uh, have the element also with data. Now we can do the same for uh, the concrete slipper, right? Let's select only the concrete slipper. There are three. You can see there, right? Concrete slipper and add data for these three elements as concrete slipper, which, as I told you, with classification properties. Okay, let's in sample this lab type for this one is is not a slab on um, great, it's different, so okay, uh, keep it empty. And finally, to finish this part, let's go for the for the walls, right? And we can select in sample the uh, the this level, the red wall cut as we were showing before, right? And select this element that is part of the of the tunnel, and let's convert into retaining walls. So same process, a data, go now to the rail walls catalog type and select the retaining wall catalog item. You can see that there's also some classification properties or you can define the width or height by value by default. Okay, and accepting. What we have now is the processes taking uh, by selecting elements by level and adding properties, right? What we have now is we have converted all these elements that was coming from uh, open rail to open building element with properties. And now if I check the schedules, I can see that in the category rail slabs, if I take a look at the report, I can see five elements, right? And you can see here there is no selection. And you can check here how is the, the balance, okay? The sub balance and the concrete slipper. There's one here, another one there, another one there. And if I go in a sample for the for the walls report, uh, there is appearing the retaining wall. And all the elements appear with the classification properties, the net volume here for the walls, uh, net volume for the uh, balance or sub balance or the concrete slipper. So we have converted these open rail elements into open building elements with properties. And as we have copied the file, open it in open buildings, and we have made the selection set by level, at data group properties with the properties value and finally we are going to export to IFC. Right? So going back to the open buildings, select the option to export to IFC and as we were checking before on the mapping, the right elements are mapped to the right category for IFC. So let's uh, go to create the export in the version, reference view, coordination view, and export the file. And we will select that the, this is the, the, the name of the file. Okay, this is the final message about there is no warning, close. And now what we have is we can go to the same folder, right? where we have the file open it and we can uh, check to open the IFC file. And in the worset output IFC folder, we have the IFC file. We can now open the file with uh, an example with VimVision and we will check how the elements we converted from open rail to open buildings and attach it data group properties and map it properly. They are having the right IFC category. You can see here how there are for walls, this element appears as a wall, retaining wall, right? And is uh, with all the properties here, the wall, the location, the geometry, the property here for element specific, classification, the rail properties I created and the quantities right for the wall. And if we go in a sample for the um, for the slab, right? Like in sample the, the balas, you can see also the rail properties, the slab common, the slab quantities. So there is the elements are exported properly with the right uh, data.